Well, a very good afternoon. Thanks for clicking on to the Tuesday edition of Logan's European Outlook. It's the 14th of September. Um, having a little bit of a hard time actually trying to figure out what to say in today's video because um, I do like to get it every second day. But, uh, you know, the weather at the moment, I'm kind of, don't know if it's just me, but I'm, I'm kind of struggling to get motivated a wee bit uh, these days. This can be a, a kind of difficult time of the year. You know, you've left your end in summer. And uh, you're kind of, you kind of feel as if you're in a kind of weather no man's land, um. If that's the the best way to put it, that's the only way I can put it at the moment. But uh, kind of weather, um, no man's land at the moment, with regards to uh, what's going on, because we're kind of now starting to get to the stage where we're kind of wanting to get the colder weather, we're maybe even wanting to get the stormier weather, and there's really not an awful lot to say, other than we do have a little bit more. Uh, activity in the Atlantic now in terms of uh, low pressure uh, we're seeing um, kind of milder spells followed by cooler spells um, you know milder um, ahead of the front cooler behind the front and uh, you know it's a bit of a kind of doldrums of autumn uh, so to speak there's nothing really uh, too dramatic to speak about um, there's no big storms to speak about or anything we did of course have Nicholas that um became a Category 1 hurricane just uh, as it uh, made landfall in South Texas, um, you know, in the last uh, eight hours or so. That's bringing your typical wind and rain conditions that you would expect with a Category 1 hurricane. We are going to see, of course, impacts uh, along the Texas coast, heavy rainfall, potentially significant rainfall, in, in fact, at that. Um, and, of course, that system will eventually... Um, move inland and dissipate but uh, I suppose one thing that is quite interesting is um, you know I, I don't know if you happen to follow Marco Batanga uh, uh, Batagna um, I do apologize if that's the wrong spelling Marco but um, I follow him on Twitter he, he works at the Met office and uh, very interesting um, a lot of the stuff that he, he tweets um, but this was a, a, a tweet that it particularly caught my eye this morning um, that said potentially record breaking strength of polar vortex coming up in the days ahead, um, which is quite interesting. And it made me wonder whether maybe this is a byproduct of the slightly more extensive Arctic sea ice that we've got at the moment over the Arctic. I don't know, it might have nothing to do with that, but it's uh, certainly interesting to see. The, the potential in the modelling indicating that for the time of the year at least, um, the uh, polar vortex could be unusually cold. So you can see here off his, uh, his, his tweet here, um, especially in this area here where he's highlighted uh, the temperature uh, at record breaking levels for this time of the year. So, um, so that kind of caught my eye. And of course, if you look at the GFS uh, forecast, um, this is a 10 uh, HPA you can see here not much of a polar vortex at the moment but as I skip through the loop you can see here where um, the, the blues start to show up over the pole representing the cooling in the uh, atmosphere up at the stratosphere level so you can see here as I sk simply skip through the next 10 to 15 days um, the, the a noticeable cool down in the atmosphere at 10 millibars um, so of course that is an indication as you would expect at this time of the year a cooling within the arctic atmosphere aloft here and like i say we don't know whether there's any kind of connection with regards to that and the uh, more extensive uh, arctic sea ice that we've got um and like I say, we've got kind of a little bit more activity in the Atlantic in terms of low pressure. We're going to have the influence, influences of that over the British Isles uh, in the next 10 days or so. Um, but like I said in the previous video, high pressure is on the whole, uh, uh, you know, a mainstay player. And, and, and the reason why, you, you, one thing that will be noticeable about that is the fact that these fronts that do come in off the Atlantic may have quite an energy about them may have quite a punch um you know in the western flank of the british isles western isles for example western scotland across ireland northern Ireland, western portions of england and wales 
but you'll notice here as each front comes through that it dissipates very significantly as it pushes east and it's all because it's bumping into a high pressure field and therefore just saps the energy out of these frontal systems as they push east so um yeah we've got a pretty a pretty monotonous pattern at, at the moment here i would i would actually if i'm being honest if we're not going to see any kind of early season cold spell i would rather actually see um uh, you know a storm uh, coming in off the atlantic and you, but you can see here uh, what we're going to have is these kind of pulses of warmth followed by cool and it's all indicative of a head and behind low pressure so you can see here very clearly this is friday a uh, uh, system over the UK, warmer associated with that ahead of the front. And then, of course, the back end, we've got cooler air that comes rolling in, uh, warm across the central Mediterranean. These are 850 millibar temperatures, by the way. Uh, but what is interesting is, is as we skip through uh, the upcoming weekend, behind that front, we've actually got a bit of a dislodge of Arctic air, early season cold coming into Scandinavia and down into central Europe here, eastern Europe as well which is quite interesting. Another system coming into the, the, the UK. You can see it here even in the temperature profile because you get these, these surges of warmth then followed immediately behind by, by colder air coming in. So that is representative of an Atlantic uh, system moving into the UK. And that's actually a, a reasonably chilly air mass by the end of the month here behind uh, one of these areas of low pressure, and of course, the warmth ahead of it over Scandinavia here. So we've got this back and forth, up and down seesaw uh, in temperature uh, over the next day, uh, well, the remainder of, of September. Fairly typical. And, um, you know, that is basically my thoughts this afternoon, uh, this Tuesday afternoon. And um, I'll, I'll kind of close up from now. Hope you enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. And I'll be back in the next couple of days with more. Bye for now.